Good morning, Beulah Church family and friends. I pray that you are blessed this beautiful day. I want to welcome you on this journey. Uh, we began together last Friday, uh, a journey together in the community, uh, sharing our devotions on Friday mornings, sharing good news, uh, sharing prayer concerns and praises and announcements for the week. But in that journey, uh, we discerned together uh, that it would be great to get out into the community beyond the local church and see, name, remember, places that are important to us and our faith. Uh, you'll note that today I'm at uh, the corner of Meadowdale and Hopkins Road uh, with uh, McDonald's behind me. This is a important location, not only because many of you gather here throughout the week to eat breakfast together, known as the McDonaldites, but this is the property, the home place of Elizabeth Winfrey Quaith. Uh, Elizabeth is currently our oldest living member of Beulah United Methodist Church. She was born and raised here on this property. This property is sacred for her family. And so as for us, a church family, we remember this location. We celebrate this location in our community as an important part of who we are as Beulah United Methodist Church. So thank you for joining me on this Friday morning uh, in this journey together. Uh, you'll remember last Friday morning, I invited you to journey with me and purchasing a book if you could. If you haven't, I understand. I would encourage you to uh, follow along each Friday morning with your book or just by listening to what I share. But we're using a book by Paul David Tripp entitled New Morning Mercies. Some of you have purchased this book. You've reached out to me in this week and have shared with me that you're excited about this journey together. So join me this morning in this journey as we step into a devotion. We're going to share some praises and prayer concerns together. We're going to close our time in prayer with a couple of announcements. So thank you for joining me this morning. I want to invite you to know that today, September the 10th, we jump into the Word of God uh, using the text that's written for us by Paul David Tripp. Uh, the, in, the, the study for the day comes from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. The title of the devotion for today is, Perhaps today you long for the Match.com Jesus, who will give you someone to love. He will be what you need, your sovereign Savior and King, if you but trust Him. The writer of a text says, We're designed to be social beings, to live in vertical community with God and horizontal community with one another. And so this place represents the vertical conversations about uh, God, uh, and with God, but it also represents the horizontal in our community, how we have fellowship with one another, uh, maybe over a breakfast sandwich. But we can know the true joys of human love only if love for God first rules our hearts. It is only when He, Christ, is in His rightful place in our hearts that people can be in their appropriate place in our life. If we love God, if love for God isn't the place where you find your rest, you need human relationships to fill those spots. But you see, that's the place that only a Savior can fill. You're looking to find your identity and deepest sense of well-being and the acceptance and love of people if Christ isn't that primary. This never works because there are no perfect people in your life. In some way, all people around us will fail us. At some point, those people will hurt you you will, fail, you will find that they have sinned against you and you against them. No mere human being is qualified to be your personal Messiah. You see, if God isn't in His rightful place in our hearts and lives, guess who we always insert in that place? The answer is, of course, me. I make my relationships all about me. Rather than love of God and for God shaping my relationships and motivating me to do the things I do, self drives me. Rather than being a patient servant in those relationships, I live in them as a demanding king. And because God is not at the center of all my thoughts and desires, I expect to get from people in my life what only God can deliver. Wow, that was powerful for me as I read that devotion this morning. So who's the king of our hearts and lives? Are we expecting people to fill those spots? Or are we inviting God, understanding this vertical relationship first, spills out into the horizontal relationships of our lives. How we live for God and place God first in our life directly impacts the relationships around us so that we not be king in our lives and individuals not be the source of what we need, but God first, which we know then creates healthy relationships. 
This picture is also primary the argument that we need God's grace. This is the primary argument as to why we need God's grace. Sin, doesn't, sin makes us focus too much on us. Sin causes us to live in broken relationships where we're monarchs and others are servants. Sin causes us to forget God and elevate people in our hearts and lives instead of God. Sin causes us to crave the love of people more than celebrating the eternal love of God. Only when we are progressively freed from our bondage to self do we come to understand the love that is ours in God and for God, and then how we then love others. God bestows on us His eternal transforming love so that by means of that love, we will become people who find rest in that love first. And because we do that, then we'll, we are well able to love others. I want to ask you this morning, who is prominent in your life? What's the primary love and the focus of your love this morning? Is it vertical only, community first, or is it God, uh, vertical in this relationship with God, and then that spills out into the horizontals of your life today, where people aren't God, and you yourself aren't king of your heart and life, but God is there first, and that spills out into every relationship, making those relationships reflective of the love that is ours in Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you in that today, church. Also, I want you to know that we appreciate your connecting with us throughout the week and sharing your prayer concerns and your praises. I have a couple prayer concerns I want to offer before us this morning. Um, I want you to remember with me Lizette Parker, who's recovering from surgery and a heart attack and doing well. I want you to remember with me the Lawver family who have lost many loved ones in these past few weeks. We want to lift up Barbara Dudley's granddaughter and great-grandson. Uh, Brooke and Caden who are not well today, who are sick. We want to continue to pray for Linda Spencer, Nancy Quarden, Henry Martin, Howard and Priscilla Byerford, our sister Comfort Miller who is not well, suffering as a result of cancer. Uh, many, many problems in her life today, so we lift comfort to the Lord. Diane Kleiss, continue to pray for our sister Diane and her daughter-in-law Evelyn, and many, many other prayer concerns. I'm certain that uh, just as sure as we have praises, there are prayer concerns. So join me in sharing these praises and prayer concerns in prayer. We're going to close with a couple of announcements and send you off into your weekend uh, remembering the vertical love that is ours in the relationship with Christ and how that spills out into the horizontal community life that is ours in Christ. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for today, the joys of this day, for this location, this spot that reminds us, God, that we are connected in the community. We thank you for the Quaif and the, and the family who donated this property, Lord. We thank you that we are one body of Christ joined together in the love that is ours in you. We invite you today to hear our praises as well as the prayer concerns of our hearts today, those named before you now. We thank you. God, we love you and we praise you. We invite that you find us faithful today. Amen. I'll remind you that we are excited about a return to church worship service on September the 19th. Sunday, September the 19th, we have sent out postcards inviting all the church family and friends uh, to gather at uh, Hopkins Road, Beulah United Methodist Church, 6930 Hopkins Road, for our Back to Church Sunday, uh, September the 19th. As I said, this will be a special day of music. Our sanctuary choir will be back in, in uh and their spaces singing and lifting praises to the Lord. We have our bell choir who will also be participating that day. So invite your friends and neighbors and family to be with us on September the 19th, Sunday morning. Uh, also an announcement prior to that is Sunday school is in session. All of our Sunday school classes are up and running, including beginning this Sunday, our children's ministries. So we look forward to you joining us on Sunday for Sunday school and then 11 o'clock worship. Thank you again for journeying with me to this sacred and uh, wonderful space. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. Please know that you are loved, you are prayed for. We appreciate your faithfulness, and we ask God's blessing on you. Have a wonderful weekend. Amen.